Hi guys, nice to see you again. Our topic today is building a fire kit and our budget is seven dollars. The first thing that I'd recommend that you go out and buy is a ferro rod and they come with a striker. And you can get those online, eBay, or Smoky Mountain Knife Works, other places. Five or six dollars. Or in your local area, you can go to a department store, go to the sporting goods section, Walmart, etc. Hardware store like Ace Hardware. And again, they're five or six dollars. And you might already have jute twine. If not, you can go out and buy some. It's cheap. A dollar or two. So we're talking around seven dollars. And that's the total cost for the fire kit that I'm going to show you today because the other stuff you have around your house. The next thing I would add to your fire kit is cotton balls. Everybody's got those. If you don't have a bag of cotton balls in your bathroom, you can steal them out of the aspirin bottles or, or your wife's makeup kit or something. And then petroleum jelly. And these work together. Next you scare up a tin. I got this one at the Dollar Tree. I think they were two for a dollar. Or here's a tin of uh, chewing tobacco found beside the road. Just any old tin if they have one. I use another little container. And what I've done is I've taken the cotton balls and I've tried to force in a lot of petroleum jelly. And then again with some jute twine. See that's just loaded with petroleum jelly. That's a cotton ball. So with all that petroleum jelly, it's more like a little lamp. The fire is heating up the jelly. It turns into liquid and then the heat is sucking it towards the flame. This is heat rising up and fumes and it's just sucking in more petroleum jelly. And with this, Seems like I have a long time to get a fire going. See, that's really extending the flame. And I have <laughs> got all this. And more than that, I just didn't feel like unrolling at all. So the next thing I would do in building a kit is I would take a freezer bag. Just the regular Ziploc bags are okay, but the freezer bags are more rugged. And you put the ferro rod with the striker in there. And then put your boot ply. Then Some cotton balls. And around the house, everybody has butane lighters, don't they? Throw one of those in there. Throw another one in there. Put in your tin. And I like candles. Candle stubs. There you go. What else can we add to your fire kit? Well, something 
that a lot of people have around the house is magnifying glass. But if you don't have one, I wouldn't go out and spend a lot of money. You could. You can just look at look for one at a discount tool store, yard sale, something like that. Or if you have an old pair of binoculars you haven't got around to throwing away yet, you can smash those apart, take the big lens. And then what I've always done with a magnifying glass before I depend on it I take it out and see how easy or difficult it is to actually start a fire with it you want something of some size and of a powerful magnification you don't want one that's a kid's toy that hardly magnifies at all and I don't want a really small one I want some size to it and magnification. If it has those, it will probably work. Then what do you want to put in your kit? Well, I've gone over the Ziploc bag and the things you might buy, the ferro rod and the jute twine if you don't have it already. Then just throwing in some things that you have around the house. Then what? I'm sending you on a quest for birch bark. It's not found in every area of the world, of course. I'm filming now in New England. We've got lots and lots of birch trees. And I'll show you how to forge that without damaging any trees. Here's a birch tree bark starting to come off where it naturally does and some people carefully tear this off you could I'm not going to but if you did salvage some harvest some just on the end you don't want to be pulling this and going around because if you pull bark off the tree then there's an area exposed then disease can get in there and if you pull the bark off all the way around then the tree dies right there but there's no need really because I just look around a little bit and here's some that fell off just naturally in the wind Here's some more. This birch tree is dead, obviously. The wood's starting to rot, though it still has some structure. Moss is growing out of it. But this bark is still very flammable. Or even better, the same log, but up here in the air. That's great stuff. That has moss on it, I'll just leave that. But this is good stuff. Throw the birch bark in your Ziploc bag and we're done. At least done for now. There's other things. Friction fire. Flint and steel. To starting out, I suggest you practice with what I have here. But we're done for today. In another sense, we're never done. So you can throw the Ziploc bag in your pack, a pocket, or a pouch. The pouch I brought today is this unconvincing uh, <laughs> military reproduction. What I've discovered is that a Ziploc bag, quart Ziploc bag filled from the top, fits in here pretty well. 
There we are. Still got this pouch. Put a compass or something in, whatever you desire. Has a belt loop. You gotta take your belt off to put that on. That's fine. Even what's the room on top? Uh, what do we know? More birch bark. Cool twigs when you're at home because of the quarantine, a stay at home order, whatever. You're bored, you can take a dry stick, be covering it with your knife, put the shavings in there. Just experiment. If you're in the city, there's no dry twigs, just a concrete sidewalk. Well, there's construction down the street. You can ask the owner or the manager, foreman, kind of jump in your dumpster and take out like uh, some lumber scraps. A lot of it's pine or spruce and it's kiln drying, right? So get some really dry shapings off of that. Throw it in your kit. I mean, you're a bushcrafter now. And the more you experiment and practice, the more experience you'll have. Plus, it's a lot of fun. That's it for now. Thank you for joining me. If you like the video, I ask you to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, uh, thumbs down. You know, it's just the way it is. Can't get something for free. I have to earn that thumbs up and comments. And I'd like to have you as, as a subscriber. Hang out more. But anyway, thank you for joining me. And I'll see you again soon. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Revelation 22, 17.